So let's start now. Now, Jacques Hultubis will talk about the trinions and the generations of bundle moduli. Okay. Well, before before starting, um, I'd like to, on, on behalf of us all, thank our, our organizers, um, well, see, and, and us, and in particular, our presiding angel or genius, depending <laughs> on the, <laughs> your preferences, Oscar, <laughs> for organizing a remarkably varied and, and wonderful concept. And uh, I'm about to, to illustrate the variety by a, a return to, to basics and, and the, uh, the plancher des vaches, as they say. <laughs> so, um, in the story, well, you, you have, of course, the Narasim and Sashadri theorem, um, which, uh, never mind it there. Um, you have a symplectic picture for represent um, for a, a Riemann surface. B. Um, you want to think of the space in flat SUN connections um, sigma. Which is the same thing basically as the representations of the fundamental group. Yes, you end mod equivalence. Um, and of course, the, the, the basic theorem is that this is the same thing as rank n, well, in fact, with an SLN structure. So, yes, rank. Uh, homomorphic bundles and stable or semi stable. Mm -hmm. on, on Sigma, um, there's already something quite remarkable here. Is on this side, of course, everything depends the, the 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 space, the moduli space depends on sigma. Um, <clears throat> so there's, a, there's even a Corelli type theorem saying it determines sigma. And um, here, um, of course, it's independent of the holomorphic structure. So it only depends on the genus, the space of representations. Now, from this side, looking at this side, there's there's a, a remarkable series of uh, of uh, flows studied by um, well, originating originating with Goldman. Um, and then worked on and considered by um, Lisa Jeffrey and Jonathan Weitzman. Um, <clears throat> so the 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 idea of the the Goldman flows is on your Riemann surface. Um, you take a a uh, those loop gamma. And sort of annoying, uh, avoiding sort of annoying um, base point issues and just thinking of parallel transports. Um, for a given representation, you've got monomy rho of gamma. Um, <clears throat> so uh, this this has a centralizer, and if you have a a uh, a, uh, an element C belonging to the stabilizer row down there. You can give an action of C on the representation, on the representation on row. 
And the way it's done basically is that you, you think of your, your curve gamma here and think of parallel transports. If you, if you got, you can sort of go through the, the curve gamma this way, um, or you can go through that way. And um, <clears throat> so let's, let's call this curve A and this curve B. And basically what you're doing is um, modifying rho by, uh, I guess, left multiplication by C, going that away, and rho B by right multiplication by C inverse, going the other way. And if you look at the defining relations in the fundamental group, this, this works precisely because C commutes with rho of gamma. Okay, so that's the that's the action, and then what uh, what Weizmann and and uh, and uh, Jeffrey did was very nice. Um, so they just looked at SUN, SU two so representations. And you notice that if you take a pan decomposition of, of sigma, <clears throat> so you're going to get um, two G minus two um, trillions and 3G minus three boundary curves, which is half the dimension of the representation space. So uh, this is where you need to use SU2 only. Um, so, um, They then look at the Goldman flows for representations, but for a, a fancy composition. So it's just do, I don't know, genus two. So there's gamma here, which I could do in a job, but there we go. So you've got three curves. And um, <clears throat> you consider the flows. And the point is the Goldman flows commute in sort of obvious geometric reasons. As a matter of fact, you can even realize uh, this in the connections world by just modifying the, the flat connection by putting a little bump here on the connection acting in this direction. So you, you can actually do it explicitly. Um, <clears throat> so they, they, uh, they show that... Uh, in fact, with the, the natural, the T of bot structure, these, well, I think Goldman already shows it. Um, oh, maybe not. Anyway, these, these are Hamiltonian flows. And uh, so the, the, um, the Hamiltonian is something like arc cosine trace of gamma. And um, and they give, in fact, S1 actions. So it's not only an integral system, but it's, it's a circle actions. And so you're getting something that's almost a toric variety. And where things are going wrong is kind of interesting. Um, So it's an almost toric variety. Um, and the reason it's almost is where rho of gamma is, is not generic, but for SU2 is plus or minus the identity. So it's stabilizers bigger than it should be. 
you can then get flows for all the elements in the stabilizer, but it's only on that, that locus where rho gamma is plus the identity or minus the identity. Um, and this gets translated into Hamiltonians that are continuous, but not smooth at those, those bad points. Um, but <clears throat> um, they, they go ahead and say, well, um, in essence, they, they, they say, well, suppose it was torque. And except they're not really doing that. They're saying, well, you have this, this variety and we have these flows. And um, <clears throat> they, um, you're still getting, after all, a polytope for the flows. So you've got MSU2 and it's mapping down to the polytope. And they say, well, we'll use bohr sommerfeld quantization. So we, you count basically points, right? the tori and the fiber with uh, integer periods or some fixed fraction one over n periods. And so you get a bunch of points and the, the you know, it's quantization. So you're thinking some set of functions. These functions are basically living on the on the points, and <clears throat> you you uh, you count them. They basically count points, and you get the Verlinde formula, which, from the holomorphic side, you know, you're counting the sections of the polarization of line bundle on orbic sections. So from the, 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 the polymorphic point of view, you're, you're getting a, a uh, <clears throat> space of sections here. You're just doing this thing. Now, if it were a toric variety, this would be on the nose, of course, because you're, you're getting. In the uh, Felinda formula, you get sections of powers. Yeah. You see this? Well, you just, just take, instead of integer, you take one over n, basically. Ah. Yeah. So that's uh, so um, <clears throat> so it's it's intriguing. You you got this variety that's that's trying desperately to be toric but failing. You know, it's it's a continuous map after all. It's not just things aren't really ripped apart. They just have got little corners that you have to deal with, and yet it's not. So the question is, race really, um, how could you you make this toric? Now this this question sort of came. Back in this is this is a thirty year old paper, but the the um, um, I should note that there's a, a lovely paper of um, Arada and Fabe, which where they're considering um, toric degenerations, which of course are beloved by presentation theorists and other people. Um, but what they're showing is in the Hamiltonian context for, for uh, of Kähler manifolds. So there's a there is a symplectic form. Um, <clears throat> so basically, you you consider the situation where you're over a disk, your central fiber x zero is toric. Um, your other Fibers aren't, but of course the the uh, it's a degeneration. So x t is equal to x t prime for t t prime to zero. Okay, and what they show is basically is you can export the Hamiltonians and the symplectic well the symplectic structure over there, but you can export the Hamiltonians in such a way that the at least the 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 dense c star to the n orbit well the sorry. Yeah, this C star to the n orbit, which you should think of as S1 to the n, because we're in the, the symplectic world, times the, 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 well, the, the, the range of the Hamiltonians, gets exported to here. So the, the, uh, <clears throat> the zero Hamiltonians um, 
export to um, XT. Um, continuous and with a big open piece uh, where it's basically the, the, the X zero integrable system. Sort of the, the you know, not the big cell, the big, uh, well, the generic, um, well, just the C start at the end. Okay, so so the, the Hamiltonian system could be made to live here, but there there's sort of points where it doesn't work. And it's basically this 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 uh, this setup. So the question was already at the time, what what would the toric variety be? And then you you think of this this Pirelli theorem for, for moduli. And somehow the only way you can you can imagine the uh, um, um, things to uh, the, the complex structure and the Hamiltonian structures to line up basically would be on something rational. Um, <clears throat> so we'd like to deform. And sigma to something toric, and um, <clears throat> well, it should be associated because, after all, you've got the pan decomposition um, to a decomposition to a de deformation, basically, where you're taking your, your curve and you're, you're deforming it to, uh, to some sort of balloon animal. Right, so you're squeezing all the, the um, all the gammas to the points. Okay, so, um, and even better, um, to, um, I suppose, to a sort of glued picture. So you glue. Blue. Blue. In other words, moduli spaces on puncture surfaces, which then can be glued. And in fact, with with uh, um, with Lisa Jeffrey and and uh, with some help from. Yes, we we had this, this we had the solution. We know what it is. Uh, this was again quite a while ago. Um, <clears throat> so you you uh, what you have is uh, it's basically a generation a, a generalization of the spaces of, of parabolic vector bundles, but you want to be able to glue and to glue really you need some trivialization. So, so um, if you want a, a space of, uh, of course, framed um, irreducibles. So we're, we're in the, the sort of technology that was used by Alexei and Malkin and Meinrank of, of sort of quasi Hamiltonian Group value moment map. So everything's done with the group instead of the the, uh, the Lie algebra. <clears throat> um, so what do you want? Um, say if sigma tilde is a curve with uh, I don't know k punctures. Um, 
Jesus. G tilde, uh, what you want basically is you put a, a uh, you think of the space of representations of the fundamental group, but you add in a trivialization at each, uh, at each puncture. So you've got, you want your usual, um, A cycle and, and uh, B cycles. But then apart from the, your usual base one, you add in an extra one here. So, and an extra one here. And uh, so you have extra base points. You, you end up quotioning out the effect of this one, the, the choice of trivialization, but you add in an extra base point here, which you keep. And so what you've got basically is you normalize things so that, remember you're in a, in a compact group, so you C1, C2 going around, and then you've got parallel transports D1 and D2 taking you here. And instead of having D2, C, C2, D2 inverse, you, you separate them out. And what you do is you've got the uh, CI, in not only the torus, but in fact, the fundamental alpha. Um, and um, <clears throat> included in the maximal torus. You can do this for, for arbitrary rank, obviously, arbitrary groups. Um, <clears throat> So let's just, you know, it's a little longer. So you want a space of um, representations on or of sigma build up plus uh, trivializations at the punctures. Um, so what is this from the point of view of, you're looking for a replacement of parabolic bundles, but from the whole model? It's doing the universal parabolic bundle. This is the moduli space. This will be a master space in, in, uh, ah. in uh, symplectic speak. So you're getting all the parabolic structures. You see, if you're looking at moduli parabolic structures, you'd be fixing the conjugacy class yes. and not having a trivialization here. And what you end up doing from the symplectic side is taking a torus quotient, symplectic quotient. So you, the, the symplectic quotient to get a parabolic structure would be fixing the element wow. in the um, in the uh, fundamental alcove, and then quotienting by the the train changes of trivialization. So it becomes a a symplectic quotient. Then you get the parabolic, the standard parabolic uh, moduli spaces from the symplectic point of view. Um, <clears throat> now, if you do this, everything's nice. Um, as long as you stay in the interior of the uh, fundamental alco. And when you get to the edges, what you have to do is collapse something. So, um, collapse. Um, so, um, in other words, if, you, if you've got sort of bi, ci, belong to G cross T, um, <clears throat> and um, you, you um, well, let's say along the, the, uh, the ith edge, right? Um, what you end up doing is you, um, map this to uh, G mod the stabilizer of delta I, but not mod the stabilizer, but mod its commutator. Uh, 
And this process is, uh, well, in the symplectic category, with symplectic implosion, this is quasi-Hamiltonian implosion. Let me just write implosion. And you get a stratified symplectic space. Okay, so you've got the stratified space and that's it's symplectic and you can work on each, on each piece. The nice thing is we, is with Ray and, and Lisa, we also gave a, a sort of holomorphic interpretation. Um, um, which is that just as the, the parabolic structures would correspond to bundles decorated at the, the puncture points with flags in the bundle. Here, um, the, the uh, sort of you build something larger than the, um, Than the, the, the parabolic spaces, um, parabolic bundle spaces. So instead of a flag, um, um, Well, you get uh, at the okay at the point over the puncture. Mm -hmm. uh, you take elements of the exterior algebra whose kernel is the flag. So take uh, alpha i j belonging to which I guess it's n minus j e. Star. And of course, these alpha ij have to be um, uh, pure. They have to be, uh, you know, represent. It's, their kernel has to be in the right dimension. The, the thing. So they're, they're products, they're not the sums of products. Um, and compatible. So that you get a, get a flag. Um, so you're doing this now for any. So you're rank? putting in a scale. You see. Are you doing this now for any rank? Because yeah, but you were in SU two. Yeah. So this this works for any rank. Oh, for any rank. Okay. So you can you can do this, and basically what this is doing is to the kernel, you know, is, defines alpha j up to scale, but what you can do in your sequence, so alpha i one, alpha i two, etc is you can actually take some of these to zero. And so you've got a space that includes all flags uh, with scale. So you, the scale is thing, but if you take the scale to zero, you drop a space. So you get a space that actually has all the, the flags held. And that's sort of why, from the holomorphic view, it's a point of view, it's a sort of universal uh, space. And from the symplectic view, well, you're getting, like I said, this master space for parabolic bundles. So the weights are included in this. The weights are basically the norms of these alpha. There's another interesting feature of this space, which is that <clears throat> let's just consider SU2. Uh, your range for the weights is actually the full interval. Now, if you know parabolic bundles, that's forbidden. And what's happening basically is that if um, Alpha is going to zero. It's just you have no flag, and you're looking at the, the moduli space of bundles. At least you drop the flag at that point. Alpha goes to one is more interesting. What happens is that the the GIT allows a a torsion piece to stop to to pop off. When you quotient out that torsion piece, you're getting a bundle of lower degree. So you're getting this picture where the the parabolic spaces interpolate between bundles for SU, SL2 of degree zero and bundles of degree nine of 10. So it's, it's got, they're all sort of fitting in there. Okay, so this is the, the you've got this holomorphic space, you've got this, this uh, uh, symplectic space and you can glue. Okay, so you can glue. And it's a sort of peculiar gluing.
Um, so if I've got one of these, these creatures on this side and one of these creatures on this side, um, I can um, can take either the symplectic motion sort of it's an anti-diagonal motion Um, the anti-diagonal is just the, the orientations, which we we'll need later. So you can take the, the, the anti, which is to um, basically match the holonomies. So that's the moment map part. And then quotient by the by the torus or the holomorphic quotient. Just quotienting by the, uh, the, the complex, the complex torus. You notice it's a, it's a sort of strange sort of gluing from the holomorphic point of view um, because you're just identifying the sub quotients of your flag you're not actually identifying the two flags. So it's a sort of vestige that's left when the, the uh, decompositions go. And even from the symplectic point of view, as soon as you leave the interior, the, the, uh, the alcove, then you, the, the gluing is, becomes more and more tenuous. But you can glue this and, well, um, if you look for, uh, the SU2 case for one trinion, um, the moduli is P3. Okay, so with the standard either C star or S1 actions, standard moment map, standard S1 actions. So your degenerate moduli space um, moduli um, or sigma, right? Should be basically P three C the two G minus two. Um, mod what? Well, you've got S1 uh, to the um, 3G minus 3, representing all these gluing gaps. Okay, so you can do it symplectically or holomorphically as, as your choice. So one of the, the aims of this game is to sort of preserve things. Okay. Um, so that's very nice. You've got the answer. Um, you've got the, the, uh, the, uh, the two spaces, you will, you know, both have sort of either symplectic or holomorphic avatars, uh, either the, the undeformed moduli or the deformed moduli. Um, but, um, you haven't seen it as a, as a, uh, as a deformation yet. I'm, I'm confused about the statement that the moduli is P3, I mean, P3 is the moduli for genus two of the moduli space of. Uh, so the, if you look at these, these two and genus two, yes, but what uh, you? What is yeah, yeah, no, no, it's P3, but don't forget for, for genus two, you'll get P3 times P3 quotiented by C star cubed or symplectic quotient by S1 cubed. So you're getting back. And in fact, uh, I had my student using chop a, a, a genus two service in various ways. And in fact, one of the limits isn't P3, the other one is. So that, that's one case where things are things are nice, but they, they can be, you know, the, the degeneration also allows some 
So anyway, yeah, it's it's um, you've got your candidate space basically for what this thing, and it corresponds to, like I said, a balloon animal where you're you're gluing spheres together, pre-punctured spheres, and then uh, taking the associated moduli, and you're getting your your candidate. And because a three is toric, this stays toric, and life is good. Now, <clears throat> sort of, can you do this as a deformation? Um, the answer is yes, and this is some things I did more recently with, with the Adrian um, Biswas. And it still doesn't tell you what's happening for, for SUN. Um, So, um, so the the um, the statement basically is you can you can incorporate this um, into a, a deformation. Um, and so uh, the easiest way to see this is just see what happens locally, maybe just a local model. <laughs> so I'm going to take the, the family of curves. Um, X, Y equals T. On just near the origin. Okay, so you fix t, you've got a curve, and obviously t different from zero, it's smooth, and for t equals to zero, you, you've got a node. Um, well, just think of the ambient connection. Um, um, which would be um, d plus pi out over two okay so um this is locally c2 but i'm thinking of it as polar coordinates um and i want a unitary connection so that's that's the creature i want um, where I is alpha one alpha n, and again, this is um, sort of an element of the fundamental alco. Okay, um, well, you integrate. Um, And on the smooth, so t different from zero, you'll get a holonomy that is um, all this. Yeah. Basically, x, uh, the, the two disappears, which is very mysterious in any way. x alpha. And then on the the um, singular model, so you're getting basically um, am I getting the orientations right? Um, let's go around this way. This is different orientations on the surface as a whole. So you're getting I think x minus a and x bay here, or something like that. Obviously, depending on your, your uh, so you're seeing, in other words, uh, your smooth connection um, basically sort of degenerating to one with a pole at the uh, the origin, and it's it's a little bit odd because 
um, he's saying if you write them in coordinates, you're getting a one over X and one over Y here. And this is kind of interesting. You see that the thing is actually singular along the axis, but you're not in for the limit curve, you're taking the limit of things going in, and then it's, it only has a singularity of the origin. Okay, so you can do this. Um, uh, you can do this uh, symplectically quite easy, easily. You just see your, your matrices basically stay the same. And as you go to the limit, you implode them as you're supposed to. Um, the nice thing is you can do this holomorphically too. Um, and you can see your degeneration. You, you basically just have a sort of isomonogramic process that's, that's taking these things to this limit. And well, on the moduli spaces, isomonodromy is, is a sort of non-holomorphic process for individual connections. Um, it does give you a holomorphic family because after all, a constant transition matrix is, is also holomorphic. So, uh, you know, you can do this anyway. So um, holomorphically, um, You can think in terms of in terms of a um, <clears throat> a singular D bar operator. So um, basically, alpha. I think alpha over two D Z bar over Z bar uh, D X bar over X bar minus D Y bar over Y bar. Okay, and even for parabolic structures, it was never it was always a little bit of a source of confusion to me why you know you have these from the symplectic point of view, you have these it's an polynomy, it's a very geometric thing. And this this thing, when you go to the, the holomorphic side, becomes this weight that's just there in the GIT problem. It seems like a sort of technical thing. And it's but it's geometric reality. In this holomorphic side, it seems to mean the fact that you have a singular D bar operator, even on an individual or an individual curve. But here we're going to do it in a family. And um, so the, 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 the essence basically is you sort of think in terms of these operators and you can get a, a holomorphic degeneration of the moduli. Um, or a deformation. Of the moduli. From the M sigma to this, uh, I don't know, M sigma zero, which is this this funny glued object that you have. So you can you can realize it as a deformation. Um, so you're you're getting for the SU two story in some sense it's it's complete. Um, you found the torque variety. It doesn't quite fit into the Cave um, or Cave theorem because it's 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 a deformation. It's not it's not as if the space was constant and then suddenly it popped. It's it's a uh, it's a slow it's a squeezing until it turns into to this thing. I emphasize again, it's not quite the what you think of as the moduli bundles on a a um, nodal curve. It's it's just done with these partial gluing. So it's a slightly different different yeah. sense. But it's the one that corresponds well to the, the symplectic picture. So the, the whole sort of Narasim and Sishadri scheme goes through. Um, and um, so so SU2 is done and then the question that was was left was what, what about 
Um, what about S U N? Um, okay, well, the, the trillion moduli space. Um, not toric, uh, but it's trying very hard to be. So, um, so what have you got? You have a um, moduli space that puts it's a um, um, Rinian with with what? It's a rank. Um, that's an SUN bundle or SLN bundle on um, um, one. And it's got these sort of frame trivializations, frame, frame flags, so we say frame flag at zero, one, and infinity. Okay, and that's, that's your space. Now there's a generic locus. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> where first of all the bundle, let's call this thing E, E is trivial. Uh, so the flags, instead of just been located at points, well, they're they're, they're sort of global, right? Because you just evaluated the basis of global sections. And so you can compare them and you can just say the flags are transverse. Okay, well, what you do is basically you can use, use um, <clears throat> two of them to sort of normalize a basis. And then the coefficients of the others can be. We'll give you your parameters. Okay, so um, normalize the basis. So the flag one or flag of zero is you know, E1, E1, E2, so it's the standard flag. And uh, flag two, so the flag at one is, well, it's the opposite thing. So it's EN, EN, EN minus one. Okay, and already you've reduced the automorphisms by this normalization to, to a torus. And in fact, the torus is part of your, your C star to the something actions. You could sort of normalize these, um, you can act on those those things, um, but then the third flag, so flag at infinity, in this basis. Well, the first vector, see this is, so the basis. You want e one, e n is fixed up to a torus. Well. The, the line is going to be, I don't know, some CI um, guy. And there's one and two. And the, um, the plane, well, the second line, because you can normalize. So it's going to be CI one will be one equals two to n because you're normalizing and so okay so uh you'll get your c star to the n action yeah well 
so this is the this very sort of explicit description, but you can you can also uh, just take coordinates. Um, remember, you had these these elements of the exterior algebra, which you now think is is on the space of sections, and you'll get coordinates beta j one, j two, j three, which is basically alpha one. J1 wedge, alpha 2, J2 <coughs> wedge, alpha 3, J3, um, where the, the, these things sum to n. Okay, so that is, that's, these are coordinates, and there, there's a Scale and but basically yes you're you're getting these things are giving you a map from your moduli space. Um, well, from this open set. Um, so the open set p to the dimension of the. Space. So there's there's something that looks toric, so it's a start. But of course, you've dropped all these things where the bundle is not trivial, the, the flags aren't transverse, and things are. Um, so what you get in the end is a well, sort of an intermediate step is you get a sort of birational map. What is the n zero? Okay. This is the the sort of open set on the trinion that I took, where the the bundles were trivial and the flags were. Transverse. Okay. Yeah. So that's the nice set where you can do this thing just by hand explicitly. Um, <clears throat> but what you can do is get a, a birational map from the um, PD to the uh, trinion. Now, there's a sort of substitute for the um, the polytope of a toric variety when things aren't polytopes is the Akunkov body. So um, if you think of the polytope, well, the PN is a simple one, um, or PD, the dimension, right? The, the sort of integer points. Correspond basically to degrees of monomials. Monomials. Um, in, well, H0 uh, PD. Well, originally O1, but you know, you get a sort of picture like that. Now, Sort of a Kunkov, an Akunkov body does this in general. Um, so you you take a, a sort of coordinate set of divisors, sort of um, you get coordinate planes. Um, Take uh, your favorite line bundle on X, take its powers, and look at the orders of vanishing of sections along these coordinate planes. And it gives you sort of integer numbers. And this will give you sort of in a, as N increases, you get a sort of cone. You take its convex hull and you close it off. And if you were to do this for your toric variety, you, you get the, the polytope. So the point is that this thing is explicit enough that you can take the polytope here and lift it up and push it down and see as the this process sort of chops bits off and, and uh, changes the, the polytope. After all, just think of a blowing up a sort of an invariant piece of a toric variety it does change the polytope. So you, you've got things that are changing, but you have a little bit of control. And then, so you get down here a rational polytope. 
which is the Akunkov body. And then there's this lovely theorem of Anderson that says, if you've got such a creature, it will degenerate to a toric variety. And basically the scheme is that you have the ring of functions, which is filtered by these, this, these powers and, and ordering. And you degenerate the ring to a graded ring. And the graded ring gives you a toric variety. And so that's the thing. So you're seeing um, individually these, these um, things uh, degenerate. And what you can do with a bit more effort is um, is actually turn these things uh, do the the symplectic side. And in fact, if you if you think of you know the sort of general gist of the symplectic quotients, so from the holomorphic side, you're quotienting by C star. From the sym symplectic side, you're quotienting by the circle, and then the radial bit is handled by the moment maps, right? When you're sort of doing this toric picture. And indeed, if you took these, these betas that I had, and basically just take their norms, you can then go back to the, like say in my, Malkin, mine, Rankin picture defining the, the symplectic structures on these things and show that these Hamiltonians can use. So you're getting a, an integral system basically from your original coordinates on the PD. So um, that's a picture. You can then, once this gives you the, the candidate, um, or gluing, the, the, the gluing, this, this process, by the way, preserves the, the actions associated, the Goldman gluings. So you can take this part variety, glue it together, and then you're seeing that this thing is now appearing as, as a deformation and a degeneration of the original uh, moduli space of bundles. As this was a, a conference on Higgs bundles, I, I tried to see how this would Higgsify. Um, as time was short, I'll give you the short story. I failed completely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, no, you know, you can see what it is on, an, on a generic set because, you know, the generic set is, is parabolic bundles and, and, you know, you've got that sort of picture there. So that's, that's fine. But how it sort of squeezes at the edge, how are you going to get it to preserve, uh, especially on the more degenerate cases? You know, uh, get it to preserve the the uh, the correspondence, the, the nonlinear Hodge correspondences. I have no idea. So, thank you for your patience and perseverance. <laughs> and, uh, Any question? I had a question on the semi similar line. What about character varieties? I mean, is there a toric degeneration of those? You take a co character variety, maybe you take a compactification. So of, of, a, of a, of what? Uh, GLM. Oh, of the, 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 group. the, the, fun, the, the fundamental group yes, of yes. a Riemann surface. Um, yeah, this is a case where, where I sort of chickened out. The, the SUN makes it a little bit easier. Uh, I don't imagine GLN would be much. Well, yeah, no, it, it would sort of be the the the. I mean, you know, if you think of what what's the 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 uh, the Jacobian of a um, this nodal creature that that sort of should be okay. So you probably just get it an extra an extra decoration. So you get something that looks very. I mean, it, you know what 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 becomes a, a Jacobian. But we are on the character side, so the fundamental group drops. Hmm? Yes. They they you you need to put some decoration, otherwise, I mean, uh, an elliptic curve that they generate to an other one, uh, the fundamental group drops. Ah, um, yeah, but don't forget these they they they're they're sort of implicit. Uh, they're these punctures. Yeah. 
right? So it's 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 just the 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 it's more that 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 loop has just become a little tiny hole, mm -hmm. and two holes which which are sort of the, the the holonomies are sort of opposite to each other, just because of the orientation of the curve. So it's it's uh, no that that should should be okay. So you, you um, think it's more feasible the character side than the X model? Well, yeah. Uh, oh, on, you're talking about Higgs. Well, uh, well yeah, oh, sorry, character, those characters. Uh, yes. uh, well, no, no. I mean, that's that, that's uh, yeah. Well, no, because I mean, then you you you've got you know, would you take the limit just to be just allow the semi simple ones? I mean, it's sort of that type of thing. You know, it's it's. I mean, explicitly, it's dealing with all the possible Jordan forms. So if you take some some conflation of them and define a you know a not quite hopefully maybe someday eventually representation <laughs> uh or do you you sort of just throw things out um so it was that type of thing i was i was curious about on the the open set corresponding to the interior it's just you know the the, the results of simpson basically on, on parabolic structure so that's that's okay but then uh you know, it's these. So the the thing that corresponds to this this um, implosion basically is, is, is one of the sources of your your finger. Um, so you end up quotient by the stabilizers when you're gluing things like that. I don't know. No. Any other question? Well, if not, the sound good.